and a mild bit of medium, then the dancing, everyone's happy. <laughs> <laughs> could I get higher? Could I get a naked veggie, please? I can have a veggie nudie as well. Good man. Do you reckon? Mm. Oh, I'm a fatty. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, 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 what's going on guys? Reese here from More Than Genesis and More Than Podcast. I'm here live, well, not live, but in person with <laughs> Coach Smash, aka Christopher Thrasher, man with a bad man like Burrito Madness, and me. I like a radio host. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're basically sitting here, we're having a burrito, a little New Year's burrito for sharing, sharing burritos. And uh, today is a very, very authentic episode with Chris today. We're basically just having a bit of lunch together. We've had a little meet-up, had a little chat about some of the stuff we want to be doing in the new year for you guys. And uh, so we thought we'd do a little podcast like this. So excuse us, we are technically eating right now. But I promise I'll cut it out of the recording as much as possible. You might hear some slurpinny trumping in us. <laughs> How are you enjoying your burrito? I haven't had a side yet. I've oh, just okay. been doing the intro. <laughs> <laughs> so Chris, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you've been up to so I can eat? <laughs> <laughs> um, what have I been up to? So I was away last week in New York, as you well know, because you did a... Rumble on the Bronx? ...episode by yourself, yeah. <laughs> that was good fun. A lot of fun. Um, inspirational place. Um, New York always kind of come back pretty pumped up from being there. Um, it's quite surreal, isn't it? It's like the first time we've recorded a podcast face to face, and I'm yeah. like just staring at the computer, so it's a bit disconcerting because I can get away with eating this one. Technically, having a conversation rather than just speaking, and you can get away with eating. I'd say this is a great burrito. It was a burrito cafe from King's Cross. I think. I think so. Yeah, burrito, the burrito cafe by uh, King's Cross in Pancras. Yeah, highly, highly nice. recommend it. Yeah, yeah. And well, if I've any of the owners, are, mouthful, but <laughs> I've enjoyed it so far. If any of the owners are listening. You know, for that endorsement, we expect at least one free burrito. Each. 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 Yeah, I think that's a minimum you can ask for, isn't it, really? But yeah, no, so um, I was out in New York, enjoyed that immensely. Didn't really get a lot of training done between Christmas and New Year because of that, because, you know, we were walking every day, so that was great. I mean, I've just started using a fitness tracker, a uh, Garmin Vivo Smart HR Plus, which is like one of these GPS trackers, which is really cool, but at my wrist. Oh, right. right. So, okay, yeah. Yeah, so just... You know, if you go like running or walking, you can, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's a Fitbit. There you go. Similar sort of thing. Uh, this has got built-in GPS, though, so you can track where you've walked, where you've run. Obviously, it gives you basic stuff like step counts, which yeah. is really, really cool. Clocking in, like, something like 25,000 steps a day. That's what I, I do about that as well. It's, it's mad when you think about it, because, like, one of the goals, it starts at, like, 5,000 for a Fitbit. Mm. I think 5,000 steps, bloody hell, it's like an hour. <laughs> 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 this is so hard. I know, yeah. It's like, how can people not do that in a day? Yeah. Okay. No, it's crazy. So, did a lot of walking while we were there. Um, which is really interesting. I thought I was going to be shattered, but it was just proof for the point that the more you do, the more energy you technically end up having. Because mm. we were out from sort of 8, 9 o'clock every day, literally going home, changing, and going out for the evening and getting back at like 10, 11 o'clock. I mean, we were there for New Year, so we did. We rolled in just after midnight. Yeah. We literally we were sitting at this party and it's a really nice bar in um, it's like a rooftop bar in uh, Manhattan, not too far from Times Square, but far enough that you're not involved in all the mental You're not getting shot by the fireworks. <laughs> it's, it's, we saw people we walked during through Times Square during the day, like first thing in the morning, it's like nine o'clock in the morning, we always get our breakfast. And people were going into like these um, I guess you call it like little pens, really, for to hold their place for the evening. Okay. Once you're in, you're in. There's a big security check. They don't want people coming in and out all day. So I really wanted to go back and ask someone, like, what are you going to do about going to the toilet? Like, because you can bring food in with you. That's fine. But where do you where do you go to the loo? I can go <laughs> at nine o'clock in the morning till midnight. You're in you there. need a poo. You need. A, you might need a poo. You might need a poo. <laughs> yeah, at the very least, you need a win. So where do you go? What it's do you fifteen do? hours, isn't it? It's a fifteen-hour wait. Huh? How do you do it? You costly bag? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> so, um, they come with uh, little uh, five litre containers stuck to the other side of the tables. Yeah. You can just use them to share. You know, yeah. like shisha pipes, so they've all got the tubes, so you can all have a go. Yeah. Well, this is like toilet versions. No, oh, okay. Or you just take an empty Coke bottle and yeah. fill it up over the day. Do it well, like a festi- fe- metal festival styling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then throw it at Mariah Carey as she's singing. <laughs> yeah, that was like, a huge controversy that she performed. And everyone's like, oh, it's Mariah. You know, it's going to be like a big part of her like, comeback opportunity singing in Times Square at New Year. It completely bombed. Like her backing track 
wasn't playing in her ear or something. So that whole news the next day was just how she flopped in front of millions <laughs> on live television at New Year. So I kind of how do you how do I not know about this? Oh, it's, well, it's America, isn't it? You know, it's, um, <laughs> that's hilarious. It's relevant over there, but the rest of the world is going. Yeah, there's hunger and famine, and we yeah, don't really we care don't, what Mariah Carey does. Yeah, we don't really care about Americans. So uh, anyway, yes, yeah, so we had a good trip. It was a lot of fun. Um, I highly recommend New York if people have never been there before because it's just so diverse in so many different ways in yeah. terms of you know, places to eat, things to see, things to do, and good coffee as well. Very good coffee. Yeah. yeah. I find just on a tail, coffee, when you buy coffee from coffee shops, shit. It always comes out burnt, like they don't, you know what really winds me up is that they don't wash the truck thing out, mm. but it'll, you know, the arm. Mm. If you just rinse it out, all that burnt black shit comes out and you have nice coffee. They do in Cafe Nero. Do they? Mm. Well, we should go there maybe. It's just straight press from a espresso. So uh, from an espresso machine, so they take, take the shot from the espresso machine. It's not like Starbucks where it's all kind of like the Americanos are stocked and stored and ready to go. It's like filter coffee. It's a fresh espresso every time. Yeah, yeah, but isn't... Um, but they clean the arm, they rinse it, clean yeah. it, and then... That's what they don't do in most places. Yeah. They just jam it straight back in. Next, next song. You know what I mean? Mm. Just stick the next bit in. Yeah, it's right. To be honest, Cafe Nero is about one of the only places I would actually go for coffee. There's a chain because I think it's the best coffee, mm. bar none. It doesn't give you that horrible caffeine spike where you're buzzing up enough for about three hours and crashing down the other side. It tastes better. As long as you ask for it, you know, not to be too diluted. I'm, I'm that guy that's always like, just less water. The poor beverage is coming over like, is that enough water? I'm like, just a little bit less. A little bit less. <laughs> just, just a little bit less. So yeah. Take the, the one, water out. The one where I live, I now walk in and the guy looks at me and goes, the usual, and I'm like, oh, I'm that guy. <laughs> I have a usual. But that's okay, because mm. now they know how you like it and they do it like that. Yeah. So having a usual is actually pretty good. Yeah, well, as long as they do it right, I'm happy, because then I've got to sit there and explain how much exactly Excuse how much water me, guys, I, I asked for a usual, <laughs> and you gave me a regular. <laughs> right, they are two different things. <laughs> <laughs> There's this old, uh, this place I used to go out with, uh, my mate I used to work in a little cocktail bar and I, I had my own cocktail in there because I just used to go in and order off the menu. I'd be like, oh, I want something with this and this and this in. Like, you guys would just make it up. So in the end, I just had my own cocktail. It was called a super fruity double juicy and uh, it was delicious. It was lovely. Very nice. And so I haven't had it in ages. <laughs> But yeah, so what have I been up to? I've, yeah. I've been training loads, actually. Been training more than I thought I was going to, less on the planch than I thought I was going to. I've actually been going down to the gym quite a lot mm. and doing my ring stuff on the cables, and I've been doing lots of handstands. I've been, yeah. So no planching? Well, I have been doing a little bit of planching, but not, I haven't been, um, I've, because I've been going to the gym, I actually, I can't, when I try and planch at home, obviously it's all, already suffering, so I get frustrated with it and I, I don't bother, like, uh, I'll end up, oh, I've trained, so now I can't really do too heavy planch training because I've been just going super dangerous with my workout, so I've just ruined myself. And I make sure like I'm super setting everything or try setting everything and I, there's no break and I've been going in there and really just like getting 120% smash it out and I've come out feeling great and uh, I've been doing stuff countering it with the handstands so like we were talking about before when we were saying about handstands and deadlifts mm. and how they are all around a good idea yeah I've been doing it with everything so whatever I do I'll super set with like handstands and it's been really good. I've got these 20 kilo bar dumbbells I've spoken to you about before I've been using. And now it's people are kind of just the same old people who kind of turn up in a day. are used to seeing me there doing handstands now. So it's not weird anymore. Mm. And it's, uh, it's okay. Yeah. Cool. I've done a couple of really nice planches though. Yeah. I've, my, my, my form has improved massively. Got right back into it. And I can get, my, I, I can get into position. But the, but the problem I've been struggling with is being being fresh and then training the planch. <laughs> yeah. Which it, it sucks because that was what, in going into Christmas, I was like, I'm going to fix my planch and I'm going to be happy. <laughs> what happened? I am fixed my planch and I'm miserable, Chris. <laughs> 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 <No. laughs> yeah, yeah, it's frustrating. It's, when, well, you kind of set an expectation for yourself, don't you? And when you're, it's not where you want it to be, then ultimately, like any goal, you yeah. get frustrated. Yeah. I think the important thing, We've done, we talked about goal setting and stuff like that in the past, and I think it warrants a massive conversation. But the thing I'm always trying to remind myself of, clients of, 
my partner, my family, like anyone I meet along the way. So when it comes to goal setting, a, a beautiful part of setting a target for yourself is that you set it high because then you aspire, you know, it's kind of aim for the stars and reach the moon type thing. Yeah. That even if you fall short, you're still further ahead than if you would have been if you hadn't set that goal. Yeah. So when you get to that point where you're like, I wanted to have achieved this by this point, the reality for most people is they get to that point they've not quite got where they wanted. But they're like right on the edge of it. Yeah, they're right on the edge of it, but they then end up beating themselves up or chucking the towel in or whatever. Yeah. And being really horrible and then to they're themselves. Don't do it anymore. Because yeah, because they didn't reach the point that they set for themselves and it's like well, so I think you're still eighty percent of the way back. Exactly. So the most important thing like with anything is like when you do a review of any anything in your life is to look on the look and really focus your energy on the things that you have accomplished rather than those that you haven't. So what it improves throughout this process. What did I learn throughout the process? How did I get better? Because if I followed at least some of it and achieved, as you say, eighty percent of it, then I've achieved something. Mm. I'm better than I was before. Mm. You know, and that's ultimately the goal that anyone should be aspiring to have in anything they're doing in their life. Yeah. If you're better than when you started the process, the worst part of it, or the worst thing you can do, is to beat yourself up for not quite hitting the absolute goal that you set for yourself. And it's a two-way process in that when you set the goal, set it high and understand that there's always a chance you might not make that. If you make it, fantastic, you know, because you're setting it high, you're setting it to a high standard. And you're fucking smashing it, so well done. Completely. But also make it, you know, as they always say, with any goal, make it smart, you know, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic and time-oriented. Yeah. A definitive timeline that yeah. you're working on. It's not just... I want to do a handstand one day, yeah. you know, oh, 20 yeah. years later a you might do a handstand. would be nice, that's <laughs> yeah. not a goal, a handstand would be nice is not a goal. I want to be able to do a handstand by this point in time. Yeah. So it's very important to set, um, set I think a big goal, make sure you at least feel it's a table, because there's no point setting something, let's say by this time next month I wonder if, I don't know. I'm going to do a triple backflip off the floor. Exactly, perfect. I'm going to do a triple backflip off the floor. I don't, you can't set that for yourself because you know for well you've done nothing to build up to that point. So it's a big attainable goal and you can pat yourself on the back for getting even some of the way there because it's still a, a huge macro goal to have. But, but you're going to fall quite, a way, fall quite yeah. a way short of that. Yeah, yeah. So I think really what you need to do is set something that is attainable but it is still a big goal. It's still something that you think, okay, well, I, can, I know I can do that in that time frame but it is going to be a big ask as well. It's a, it's quite a big thing to set for myself. Yeah. Then if you get there, as I say, fantastic. You've set your focus on it. You've set your intentions on it. You've made the plan for the process to get there. If you get there, great. If not, assess how far short you fell. Yeah. And then review and congratulate on the things that you actually achieved in the process. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's a great way of looking at things because then you you're never scared about setting goals. Because I think one of the big reasons people go through a process, whether it's in their health, their business, their life in general, they set goals. As soon as they fall short in a couple, they stop setting goals. They yeah. stop setting targets. I've fallen victim to that so we all have. many times. We all have. So many times. Mm. One thing I have been working on is um, one arm handstands. And just kind of, as it's just started happening, it's not anything intentional at all. But my straddle has got a lot, lot better mm. from just doing so many of them when I'm super fatigued. Like, like I can't help but do a negative press. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, that's how fucked I am. And um, but I'll get one, I'll pin it, I'll get my straddle nice, and I've been working and working on leaning over that one side and turning your hips right so your, your legs are sticking out at the right angle so you can get into that position. And um, that is something I know well, I don't, the thing about it is I don't know how far away it is. I know it's quite far because I'm not, I'm not doing one arm handstands. It, it, like I'll get up but I'm out of balance. I got no idea what's going on. It's a split second thing and I come straight down. So it's not really, but you know, I think some people might try and snap a photo in that. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, it's not, that's not me, so. That's not me. Yeah, yeah, that's not me. Do you not know, do you know that tune? <laughs> no idea. No idea. But I am enjoying the salsa music in the background here. That, I wonder how much of that's going to come through in the recording. I think a lot of it is. Mm. That's, I think that's why I'm, uh, 
I'm so a bit, it's, it's winding me up a bit. And also this burrito is really nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> Actually excellent. But yeah, these one hour handstands I've been going for. And I, I've only been really training them on the uh, par uh, parallettes, like on the dumbbells down the gym more than just on the floor because of just the stress on your wrist. Mm. And I don't, I don't want to just overdo it especially when I'm working on a planche, like I don't want to just niggle my wrist doing that and then fuck my planche progression, which is more important to me. But on the parallettes, or with the dumbbells, it's quite comfortable. Because mm. you're not, you know what I mean, you're not putting any strain for it, it's just gr grabbing it. How extensive a warm-up do you do for your wrist? Quite extensive, <laughs> I'd say. Mm. It's mostly just simple stretches, like uh, static stretches. I don't really know if there are many real dynamic stretches you can do for your wrists. Uh, there probably is. You can do pulses. Are they like this? Yeah, for the benefit of anyone listening, this is for wrists just probably put his hands around in, in the air. Yeah, so a pulse would be, so for example, you can go on all fours, palms flat, as if you were in a handstand position, so shoulders and wrists and elbows aligned, fingers spread out, and then you just literally rock forward. So you just rock your body slightly forward, so you okay. just create a bit of extra flexion. Yeah, yeah, and then you can do the same, but almost like with push-ups, that's like, you lift your palms off the ground, keep your fingers on the ground, and that does it, that's good just to yeah. get that uh, kind of refined movement in. But what I actually do for like stretching exercises is that similar position, that kind of on all fours position, ready to take it good. And uh, up, turn, turn your hands out, so your fingers are pointing outwards, mm. and then you rock side to side, keeping your arms straight, mm. and then you turn your hands inwards, mm. like the palms up, mm. and then do the same, rocking like that. You probably find you, there's very, very little actual movement happening, but it's really good still. You can do the same on all fours, so that same position. Yeah, yeah. Just rocking back and, and then forth. And do it this way and lean back. Mm. But what I tend to do at the gym, instead of just being on all, my, all fours, because the floor is just horrible on your knees, what I do is I just do it standing. Mm. So same position, but you just bend, grab your fingers and bend your hands back this way. Mm. And then that, and that's just one side you can do. You can also do that with your chest stretch, like your biceps and stuff, it's really good. And um, then you do it with your, your hand like forward, as if you were in your handstand position, you put your fingers back towards your elbow, mm. and you'll be able to move your shoulder to do it this, like, kind of tweak this way or tweak that way with your elbow forward and then you can do it the same this way like that or like that and you, so there's loads of different little positions you can do by just tweaking your shoulder position slightly and it can move your hand like yeah all the way around here and so i do pretty extensive wrist stretching basically mm. <laughs> i really i never thought about it before mm. i was going to be like oh, i don't really do much wrist stuff <laughs> well this is it i mean i've always done it for martial arts not so much for lifting because with traditional lifting, uh, you know, outside of the Olympic lifts, the snatches and the cleans, the, the the stress on the wrist is actually quite minimal because unless you're doing a press up, it, there's very little flexion or extension in the wrist joint itself. Most things are set the wrist in a neutral position because yeah. you're gripping a weight and you're either pushing or pulling, but you're very rarely flexing or extending through that joint. So there's very little movement in the wrist at all. So yeah. the wrist gets strong but it's never put under load in a weaker position. It's yeah. always in a very, set in a very strong neutral position. So now, because of wanting to do more handstand work and you know, tucks and things like that, you know, more just general body weight and gymnastic stuff, I've had to start paying more attention to what's happening with my wrists. It's better, and also doing the, that going hand in hand with the cleans and the snatches, because and that- clean and snatches. The, yeah. <laughs> Oh, dear, that's, that. it's never going to end, is it? it? No, it's not, because I, I just love it. It probably tickles me. So, obviously when you're rolling the bar back, you're rolling back on your wrists. Yeah. In, you know, in a, in a snatch, there's a fair bit of flexion, but then, interestingly, like you said about the warm-up, how you can progress the, the warm-up into your fingers as well, so rocking backwards and forwards through the wrist and then lifting up onto the fingers, yeah. that's actually really essential when you're doing a clean, because as you roll the bar up onto the shoulders, you actually yeah, come back up onto that. the fingers. Yeah, yeah. You're not on the palm of the wrist anymore like you would be in a snatch, you're actually yeah. right up on the fingers, bringing the bar right the way into the, the body. Like this. Like that, yeah. <laughs> I'm, doing these, I'm doing these demonstrations, I'm conscious of that no one can see it. Yeah. You should have filmed the video I did. Um, <laughs> worse you'd be able to see all the quack movie go around my face <laughs> <laughs> so i'm starting to understand the necessity of it and that's why i was interested to ask you because obviously a large part of gymnastics and yeah. aesthetics work is transferring loads through the wrist and weak, weaker or more how should we say more risk or risk what's what i'm looking for 
I'm terrible at words today. I'm really struggling. <laughs> Chris, yeah, has not been able to get his words out all day, all morning. Since I met him, he's been more stumbly and jumbly than I am. You know, I consider myself a fairly eloquent person. Like, I can, I'm quite eloquent. <laughs> eloquent, eloquent. Oh, right, okay. You dodged that you delay. Know, I, I, maybe I didn't. Maybe that's a slip up as well. <laughs> eloquent. Eloquent as in talking in public. I'm happy expressing myself to people and fairly comfortable. It's eloquent works as well. I'm just not talking now, I need my burrito. No, so, my I've, my, I've just been more focused on wrist based warm ups. I'm interested to see what different people do because yeah. there seems to be, like, some people, it's crazy, like half their warm up is wrist oriented preparation. Well, I think when I think about what I do as like general workout, like focus and kind of which joints I'm working on and which joints I'm avoiding. My big ones are my hips, mm. my shoulders, and my wrists. Excuse me. <laughs> the person's just going to pick us up, guys. He's beeping for us outside. We'll be, we'll be back in a sec. <laughs> Boy, give me that turn out. <laughs> that was just the beans and the burrito. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, so um, I forgot what I was saying. What was I talking about? You were uh, saying about, we're talking about wrist preparation. Oh, yeah. That didn't help. <laughs> so, I, I don't. I focus on my shoulders, my wrists, and my hips. Like they're like the kind of big ones, in terms mostly for my other body. Because like you, I don't really count my spine as like a joint. Why? Um, because it's just a bunch of them. And so I don't. I don't. So because say, it's lots of joints, it doesn't count as a joint. Yeah. Well, it's it's more like trunk, mm. and that covers your your front and your back of it. When I when I when most people talk about back training, what they're talking about mostly is like their traps and their rhomboids and like you know upper back, not mm. down round here, around your obliques and you know, all this stuff. So like that is shoulders to me. You're talking bollocks when you say you're training your back. <laughs> it's interesting though because a big thing that so I follow all the gymnastic strength guys on social media. No, for those you don't know, check them out gymnastic strength or gymnastic bodies actually, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Somna. <clears throat> who did the podcast with Tim Ferriss, which kind of created this podcast in a way because we were talking about similar stuff and realised it would make for a good show. But one of their big okay. preparation drills and strength slash mobility um, drills is the Jefferson curl. So rolling the barbell from top all the way down, but rolling one vertebrae at a time under load. Yeah, yeah. It's obviously starting body weight and then increasing to an Olympic bar and then adding weight to the bar. And it's, it's a big thing in that community about, you know, what's your Jefferson curl? You know, it's like, what's your bench? What's your Jefferson curl? You see these guys, you know, who are able to support huge amounts of weight in a very forward flexed, almost kind of, well, almost folded position. Okay, so what's your Jefferson curl then? So your Jefferson curl is standing, are you asking me what mine is? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, uh, no, what is a Jefferson? All right, so you stand on, ideally on an elevated platform. So it's just a small step or a yeah. um, platform. And with an Olympic bar held in front of you, you so sort of hands just outside the thighs, so about shoulder width apart. Yeah. You just let the whole body roll forward, like almost focusing on one vertebrae at a time. So you tuck the head. Yeah, and then, then you start go to roll the upper back down, down. down. Yeah, and you're just essentially running the bar down your legs. You are, and then you're trying to get to a position. Ideally, eventually, if you can't initially with your hamstring length, get to a position where your wrists are kind of in line or past your toes. Your toes, yeah, yeah. So obviously they've gone to that deficit. Then from that position, just hold that for a few seconds, just to feel the stretch, and then roll it back up yeah. again, one vertebrae at a time. So into a multiple joints obviously that's a great way of really feeling into the back yeah yeah so then beyond that you just progress it quite simply by doing it for more reps and then obviously increasing the load as well so volume and load are the kind of two real metrics can change within that yeah so you just see guys adding five ten twenty kilos each side you know i think most of the scenes probably around about i guess like 70 or 80 kilos okay, i'm sure yeah. there are people that do more that but for that so movement, you're essentially the, like jeff so curling your body weight yeah. times two Exactly. So, for well, wait, the benefit no, of the warm-up, you don't. Too, just because you're only loading that, and you know, it's not like you're loading your body weight on that, you're just essentially doing the bend, yeah. and you're just taking a body weight. Yeah. Like, okay. But it's predominantly a warm-up drill. It's not like a max strength. I don't, at least I don't think many people use it for max strength. I don't imagine yet. it's that safe to... When I go to the chiropractor, I'm trying to bend my back the other way because it's too bent forward. Mm. 
and like um, I'm, I'm not saying that that's a bad idea. It's, it's that'll do massive things for like the strength and control of like manipulating that that load mm. through your back, across your back, and it'll stop you getting more injured when you do stuff like deadlifts badly because it'll kind of bring in that support and it'll make you. Because one of the big things about your massive bodies that he talks about is not being in like a um, like a neutral spine position is being you're either hollow body or hollow back. Mm. Yeah, and it's true. Like it's, mm. uh, you, when you're doing stuff, especially with gymnastics, it's one or the other. When you're swinging forward, you're hollow body. When you're swinging through, you're hollow back. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it's yeah. it continues, and it, that is massive. Like to be able to um, to to be strong in those positions. Sorry. So uh, that'd be great, but I've never done any Jeps and curls or stuff like that. What I do, I, I do like that kind of bend, but I just do it like kind of body weight, and I'll just start on my thighs, and I'll just roll all the way down, and I'll roll all the way back, mm. and then I like usually mix that with some like cobras and some downward dog mm. type shoulder to shoulder work as well. So I guess I do do that kind of stuff. Yeah, but I think the movement itself is fine because it is a natural movement. You know, bend down, touch your toes. It's mm. just doing it in a controlled, conscious way. Mm. Then all that's happened is that people who, you know, particularly the high level athletes, and certainly as far as I'm aware, not what you consider a foundational movement because it presupposes some degree of postural strength and yeah, balance yeah. in advance of doing it because yeah. you wouldn't have someone who has a rigidly kyphotic posture, i.e. they're permanently hollow body because that's not the choice, that's through just a postural misalignment yeah, and yeah. You know, the wrong things being tight and the wrong things being weak and they're being very poor. Um, anterior to posterior muscular ratios. Yeah. So it does, as I say, it presupposes you're a, you have a certain level of strength to a certain point. You then it's up to you how you then progress it beyond that point. You know, it's your choice to say, right, I either want to just do this purely for a few reps as a warm up, or I actually want to really test myself and progress on it. But again, keeping the volume low relative to the load yeah. that you're actually adding to it. So if you're putting more weight onto it, likewise with any strength work, the reps are going to go down. And equally, if you're just doing body weight with some dumbbells or with just a straight barbell, you're going to be able to do more reps and yeah, build yeah. up the volume. And, you know, the endurance aspect, obviously the heat in the body relevant to whatever drills you're going to be doing thereafter. I think it's really interesting. I might try out some uh, some loaded Jefferson curls. Just give it a go. Let's have a little mess around with it. It sounds like a fun thing to do next time I'm down the gym. Hmm. I quite like, like um, because I've been training there a lot, I've had loads of situations where I'm, I am doing something really unusual that people are like, look, like I'm trying to do one arm crow stands. And because it's not just like, like a one arm elbow lever where you just kind of balance on your arm and people can get their head around that. You're, it's like elbow to knee support like this mm. and you're, you're just here and you're trying to get that like here. Mm. You're trying to, yeah, we should have done this in video. <laughs> just for anyone listening, if you could see what Reese is doing now in the middle of the burrito yeah. shop. <laughs> it's like he's, you're almost doing time with music to be fair. Oh, well, that's what I was going for. I was like, and one, two, three, and a two, two, three, and a four, two, three, and a... Oh. You, you wouldn't realize we'll that camera next Musically time. inclined at all, would you? <laughs> we'll definitely bring a camera next time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we should. <laughs> you can just see us munching. But uh, yeah, that would be really cool, actually, to do. I'm going to start doing some Jefferson curls. That's really interesting. So, just as a, an aside, because when we spoke about this episode, I said we might be less touching a bit of nutrition stuff just for fun, and as we're sitting and eating lunch at the moment, it seems quite appropriate. Yeah, yeah. How was your Christmas? Lots of chocolate? You know what, I, hadn't, I, I, I didn't eat a lot of chocolate, I did eat a bit, but mm. not as much as I thought I was going to, not mm. as much as I'm renowned for. <laughs> so I think it's really important, uh, so I want more people to hear about is people that are putting themselves on a pedestal saying I'm a coach, you know, I'm someone that pushes my body, I'm someone that's pretty dialed in on my health and fitness. But I also do eat biscuits and cakes. Oh yeah, one thing that I, uh, I, I enjoy, never do I enjoy food. is I, I never hold myself back. If I want something, I just have it. Because I think overall, I, I'm quite disciplined in making generally good decisions. Yeah. And that's like, um, this, this is how I use the 80-20 rule. 80% mm. good decisions so I can make 20% bad ones. Mm. So I can like, not wrong decisions or bad, you know, like, but mm. not necessarily the beneficial one. Like, so I might go out for a drink or I might go whatever, you know. I might eat a whole pack of Reese's cups because God knows I fucking love them. <laughs> I do love them. Is that because they're called Reese's as well? No. Do you feel some degree I'm, of ownership on them? I do a little bit, but they start it wrong. So I, if anything, I'm a bit offended by that. Um, I'd say that's, that's, you go into like anywhere in the States, it's just Reese's pieces, Reese's <laughs> stuff everywhere. 
crazy. It's Maybe not, we should do a that. workshop in the US. <laughs> Maybe we should. They're not even that nice, really. I mean, it's just being a bear and chocolate. It's not. It's nothing but a groundbreaking. <laughs> the bear is so about it. I just need to stick inside me. <laughs> the problem. Is, <laughs> just gonna let the one hang there. <laughs> the thing. Um, the thing that kills me is that I'm like myself and my girlfriend Rebecca. We go to so many like healthy cafes and bakeries and places like that. I mean, one of our key things in. New York was to find all the sort of vegan, um, dairy free, gluten free type yeah, bakery yeah. places. There's loads of them, you know, it's huge. And they're amazing. They, it tastes like the brownies and the muffins, and they taste so much better. And they, some of them are like zero sugar, you know, it's just all naturally occurring fruit sugars, stuff like that. Yeah. That tastes so good compared to like something you go and buy in a Starbucks, and you're like, oh my god, it just it tastes cheap, and I paid the same amount as I could have got something that's fresh baked yeah. this morning with better ingredients. You know, buy a bunch of hippies. Exactly. You know, hippies cook really good stuff, very yeah, good brownies. Yeah, yeah very um, good brownies. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, so we go out and do that sort of stuff. So you know, one and Re Rebecca you know, cooks a ton of really nice stuff at home as well. She's really baker and you know sets herself up to be a healthy baker hopefully one day that's someone yeah. that can share her recipes and she's experimenting all the time awesome. it is amazing and she'll always make stuff uh, that is similar or she'll try and make stuff that's similar to things that are on the market so she'll make like a chocolate and peanut cup type thing or bar or something yeah, yeah. and i eat that and i'm like oh my good god it's like maybe like raw nut butter raw cacao Amazing stuff, <laughs> absolutely phenomenal. Let's go. And then I'll go, exactly, and then I'll go and eat like a Reese's cup or a Snickers bar, and I'm like, yeah, that's so shit. disappointing. <laughs> that's so, you know, it's not worth the aggravation. I'd rather just wait till yeah. I get home and eat something that she's made. So not everyone's in that situation, but there are so many good options now. We just go, you know, go to a major city like London, San Francisco, New York, LA, anywhere you think of. Even you know, continental <laughs> Europe, you can find more of these places yeah, picking yeah. up now. And it's so much nicer than just kind of yeah. going for those choices, but. I take your point that if you really want one of those things, <laughs> it's better to just have it and forego the stress of debating with yourself, should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I, should I, should I just have it and accept that it's okay, you know, as long as you didn't now a whole multi-pack of, I don't yeah. know, what, what, what have I seen That's everywhere? one thing that I struggle, like I used to struggle a lot with, and that, because I am a fucking gannet. I really am. Like, you put something there and I would eat it all. Like, today I'm not eating all this burrito because this is earlier than I've eaten in like nine months. All right. I've never eaten this early. My, what my time is it? It's 10 to 1. No way. Do like, you really not eat until like 3 o'clock? I really don't eat till like 3 o'clock. <laughs> it's crazy. So you don't get up most days until late if you're working late. If I work late, yeah, I won't get up till like 10. Mm. But, um, but even then, I don't know if I can go the first four five hours. hours without. Five hours, yeah. Like actually think about that and that's really not that long yeah. because if you like when I used to get work up here like doing the engineering I was up at five, half five and I, I'd be at work at eight so that's three hours straight mm. away and then you think when you've kind of been at work for an hour you kind of you want to eat don't you? Mm. So I think I've always it's not that crazy it's not that radical no. but, but it works for you. Yeah and it's quite easy to go from then like another two or three hours without eating mm. so I'll have like a coffee or something and that's why in, in, like intermittent fasting quite works for me because I can I can in, what's it called I can let loose my gannet monkey brain in the evenings when like Take I a monkey for a walk I need to, yeah you know get him on a chain walk around <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant I love your <laughs> fucking monkey analogy <laughs> oh, you've made the funniest things on this podcast you know that. <laughs> I doubt that. And you're like, oh yeah, you know, subscribe to us. It's all very anonymous. I'm not gonna hug you. I'm not gonna hug you in case you want. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I am a veritable comedian. Yeah, yeah. No one knows about it because I'm there shouting at them all the time. Yeah, like, fucking hell, really? Shut up. Yeah. Let's listen to Christmas. Christmas might say something funny. Be quiet. Yeah, quiet. Yeah. <laughs> so, eating. Yeah. So not till three o'clock. Yeah, but look, that, that's great because that's it. Clearly works for you. Yeah, I'm very similar in that. I, like we talked about briefly earlier today, I don't have a rigid eating plan, but I just know that I'm going to be hungry probably every four hours. Mm -hmm. And what I tend to have in the mornings now, I think we talked about before, I do more often than not just have green juice, in which goes spinach, banana, kiwi, cucumber, ginger avocado, um, probably some pineapple juice or something like that. You know, so it's, it's quite, a, there's a lot of calories. I've yeah. got protein powder in it as well, pea protein, some um, 
grids in as well, just to get a shot of that. Green and mean. Very much so, yeah. Well, it's also because, we, like I said, mentioned before, you know, having less animal produce in the diet requires a certain amount of creatine to be supplemented regardless, um, just for brain function, if nothing else. Mm. So that's a nice way of getting it in in the morning. So I tend to have at least half of that. I'll make them quite a big one and have half of that and then the other half after a workout or just later in the day, kind of as a snack. So that normally sees me through if I have that with like a green tea. That can only do me for about two or three hours and then I'll start to think, actually, no, I need something a bit more substantial. Mm. So, is still very much a case of listening to my body, but it just becomes easier to predict that I know I'm probably going to be hungry in a couple of hours, so yeah, I yeah. better prepare to eat in a couple of hours. Yeah. I have that in mind rather than go hungry because that's just not an option. Because I that's when like things. The, I'm like the lady out of the Snickers advert, I mean, when I'm hungry. I'm a fucking. I'm a right ninny. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what I mean? I'm, you're no, not, I don't. You're not yourself you're get... when, you're, uh, when you're hungry. Oh, it's the Snickers okay, advert. Get, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm like. I'm Mr. Bean, that lady in the dress. I'm all of them in every instance. Oh, yeah. As soon as I'm hungry. I, I, do you, you get know, hungry? Yeah, I do, yeah. But I, I get more like frustrated and angry. I don't get like, I don't start barking and that. I'm like, I need to eat, I gotta eat. I'm like, I'm, where's my food? And I stress I just, myself out. Right? Yeah. I just go quiet. Yeah. Like, it's whenever, like, if we ever go out anywhere, shopping or walking around or anything like that. I'll just, I'll feel it coming on and, I, and Rebecca will be chatting away to me or whoever I'm with and I just, re I can recognise that I'm starting to go monosyllabic, so I'm, it's all yes, no answers, oh, and yeah, occasionally yeah. grunts, <laughs> and yeah, and it's oh, like I need, I need food, well, yeah, I need food, <laughs> I need food now, so it's got to a point now where a lot of the time it's better that we, if, we, if we're going out anywhere, we plan to go somewhere to eat first because then the rest of the day will be far easier to get through. But like, <laughs> yeah. wherever we go, we'll have brunch, lunch, whatever it might be, to start the, the process. And then I'm not going to feel hungry for the next three or four hours. So we'll be okay and I can be a nice person. That's a good way to think about your day trips. Yeah. Hmm. Makes it sound like I lot, think a lot about food. I actually don't think about food that much. But there are certain things where I'm just like, no, I kind of need to factor it in. Yeah. And that, like, that's it. Once you know those few little things you need to think about, the rest is easy. Yeah. A lot of issues people have with food is not being prepared, mm. not knowing what to eat, mm. and not knowing how to get hold of stuff or make stuff available yeah. to them. And being prepared isn't just about, I mean, I think there's the whole big thing about food preparation, you know, mm. the people like making fortunes off of doing videos on Instagram and YouTube about, you know, doing your big food prep, you know, I get, you used to get asked about that a, a load, you know, oh, what's the best food to food prep? It's like, well, anything really, you can make a bulk lot of most types of food. Yeah. It's just whether or not you're happy to eat it cold or reheated three or four, five days, three or four, mm. five days mm. later. So everything kind of works, you know, and I'd always say, okay, we'll just basically, you know, your rice, your pasta, lob all that in with beans, a little bit of meat if that's what you're, you know, you're looking for, and then just some veg and stew it, cook, slow cook it, whatever it yeah. means, and, and do that. But preparation also comes down to knowing where there are good places to eat, where there are good food options, and that takes some time to sometimes figure out. But for example, you know, this burrito place we're sat in at the moment, I discovered this ages ago and now this is my go-to because of using King's Cross to get home. Yeah. If I've not had a chance to get food elsewhere, I'll factor in coming here because I know I can get a healthy, so naked the burrito. Station, they give it to you naked, which is always a bonus. Yep. And I can just get on the train and eat it on the way home. Yeah, so they, even supply, they even supply right, this burrito place, even has plastic cutlery for you to take with you. Exactly. Which and they are really good in here as well. They're very yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, that really was very, very, very nice. And they do courgettes as well, which I've never had in a burrito anywhere else. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a big courgette guy, you know. Really? I love courgettes. I don't mind them, you know. They're just like, um, they're like the freaky old brother of the cucumber family. Mm. Do you know what I mean? They're a bit dry. No, but if you if you cook it in like a curry or yeah, uh, I know, yeah, but I mean something. compared to a cucumber, it's mm. like it's like eighty percent water or something. And then you got your and it's like sixty percent maybe. It's like you know apples these days. You buy apples from a shop and they're basically powder. Mm. Yeah, have you have you tried? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like you you crunch it. It's not juicy. It's not like yes. Not how they used to be, they're like dry. Yeah. That's because that's because of the storage process, isn't it? When it's being shipped and that's probably lived in a fridge yeah. for three months before it's actually got into the supermarket. Yeah. So you know, that's just like, that's more storage than the actual quality of the food from source necessarily. Yeah. But yeah, you're you're hundred percent right, you know, there are certain things that you just do do seem to taste different now than what they used to. Yeah. It is, it is a big switch. Mostly I think. fruit. 
a yeah. nudge, I find. Unless you go to like Lidl or somewhere like that, mm. where they're getting that organic stuff from Europe. Yeah. And then you, you, you get a good deal, you get bloody massive vegetables you can knock someone out with. They're huge. They are freakish. Yeah. <laughs> they are freakish. Which I don't know how you can call them organic, because that's clearly like some sort of GMO <laughs> stuff going on. No, I don't think it is. Because really? like, you look at them, they're all different sizes, they're all different shapes. Yeah. One's got an extra thumb. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, they're all there. <laughs> it's like the bloody Adam's family of new vegetables. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Yeah, no, I, I probably should shop in more of those places because just that stuff in Tesco just doesn't quite cut it. Although the organic stuff's quite nice. But yeah, anyway, yeah. Going back to where we started this conversation, <laughs> the kind of whole 80 20 thing. And sorry, I'll actually just finish off on that point. You know, so preparation is about knowing where you can get stuff on the go as well as preparing yeah, stuff ready for yourself I, I as well. I do like meal prep stuff. I don't worry about any of that. Mm. I know what I got available to me. I know kind of what I eat in my rough patterns. Like I said, I'm not fixed like you are, like you said. I'm not like strict. I'm not like I, I eat. I eat mostly good stuff. Like I'm vegetarian, so most of the food I put in my body is pretty like thumbs up. Mm. Like me on Facebook, heart, you know, smiley face way. Right? And it's only very rarely that wonky, I have wonky smile emoji. three packs of Reese's Cups, sad cry face one. You know what I mean? <laughs> But even then, I'm kind of still thumbs up, happy face, heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, where are we going? Anyway, um, so, yeah. so I, no, I, I completely agree with you. And what's interesting, something you said earlier on about doing the 80-20 mm. approach, which you know, we've mentioned before. And I, I find that a great way to, to live in general, you know, 20% of your results. Sorry, 80% of your results come from 20% of your work or splitting up. You know, 80% of the time I'm on point with everything, 20% of the time I'm just kind of quite happy to be fairly casual. Yeah. What I tend to find with food... A casual explorer. Indeed. What I tend to find with food is I set myself an 80-20 rule. So I'm like, okay, 20% of the food may have, in my case, some animal produce in it. There may be a little bit of meat or fish. There may be some sugar. All the things that I would, in an ideal world, I'd probably avoid 100% of the time, but I accept that living in a modern society, having a busy life, you know, somewhere you've got to allow yourself some flexibility. I said that, what I find quite interesting is that I end up probably being actually 90 10. Actually, end up being higher because of being more relaxed with myself and allowing it. Somehow it still comes in pretty much almost on point to where I'd like it to be anyway, which yeah. I always find quite fascinating. Whereas when you go more stringent and say it has to be 80 20, it's almost like you collapse. Once you, more once you get strict with stuff, as soon as you slip it all out the window and you feel like you failed and you feel yeah. like, oh my god, it's a process, right? I, I know this from like quitting smoking. I've quit smoking plenty of times, started smoking plenty of times. And it's not like um, it's not like I quit. I never smoke again because, like, I know I, if I have a couple of drinks, if I'm out with my mates, they're all having a couple of fags. I'll probably they'll probably have one by the end of the night, or I'll have a little bit on one of theirs. And I think if I just have a whole one, I'm not going to suck on something that you've had your lips and tongue and bloody probably snot around. Yeah. So you know what I mean. Lovely. So like, I may maybe end up having a fag like, if I go out, and I'm not going to beat myself. I don't start smoking again for that. Hmm. I don't really crave it. I have got my little e-cigarette, which I it's more. A habitual thing. There's no nicotine in it or nothing. Like it's just a bad habit, mm. and it's something to do when I'm walking around. <coughs> like there's no justification for having it whatsoever. But if I go out and I have a bag, like I'll have this for a couple of days, just because I know it'll trigger all those habits again. Because it, that's literally what it is. Mm. And then, so for a couple of days after, then I'll chill out. I'll have the beat. You know, I'll, I'll hit it a bit. I'm not. Um, I'm not keen on it particularly. I, I tend to get nice fruity flavors because because if I'm doing it, I want to enjoy the experience but I also in a, in a, by the time a couple of days has gone round I'm looking at it going and I'm going back down a hole here like I'm not actually getting any benefit or like all I'm doing is re, uh, like restructuring this habit mm. the smoking habit and I don't need it mm. so like I naturally kind of wing myself off it because I'm not smoking so then why am I doing that now then like, mm. do, and it helps with that whole process. But at the same time, it means when I do come to have a fag, I'm not beating myself up in the morning going, oh, I had a fucking fag. I feel shit. My lungs notice it immediately. Mm. Like, it's mad that you notice that kind of shit because like, I smoked for years and years and years, mm. like, just no worries. And um, yeah, yeah, now, uh, now I've been able to just like shake it off a couple of times and I've, like I say, I've quit and I come back to it, but I now use that 
all those little attempts, all those little like slip ups and everything as a reinforcement to be like, it's a decision in the moment. And that's it. I've never 100% quit smoking because there's going to be a time where Chris's mate Dave is going to go, oh, at least you want a fag and I'm going to go, oh, yeah, go on And that's one in my 20. And I know that like that's one of my 20 and I kind of, I won't, I won't even punish myself and I won't think, oh, I shouldn't have that. Mm. I won't feel guilty. The only time I do feel a bit guilty of that or like if I'm having a big pack of Reese's Cups is if someone's with me who I think they won't think that this is like a professional thing but then at the same time I, this is my internal battle with myself I'm like oh Lord, do you see me on a fag you know so I'm a personal trainer like it's suddenly I don't look that professional I mean I think fuck it like I know that I am healthier than most fucking people out there like guarantee and I know that I am allowing this I know this is a disciplined choice mm. rather than just going yeah let's go and get fat fat <laughs> because I'm not I don't need it I don't need to be like that and even when I do I get a bit bored of it yeah. so like I think just having that easy choice smoking is really good for learning to discipline yourself because you can you can go right okay so this is my 20 I'll have a fag today and then I know I stick to that and I'll be all right. Don't beat myself up for it. Don't beat myself up for nothing. I'll be like, I'll have it. And if I have, if I if it's three weeks in and I realised every week I've ended up having a fag, mm. then I'll be like, that red flags it for me. And I'll know because there'll be a time when I'm sitting down and I think, oh shit, I've had like four fags this week or whatever. And I'll be like. Right, well, strict up then. And I'll just strict up for a week and then it, I, I can relax again because I don't worry about it anymore. It's just like, it's an ongoing process. It's, you're never complete. No one's ever perfect. Do you know what I mean? Like, that guy, he ain't perfect. That guy down there, he's not perfect. There are a lot of examples. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And I could add more to that, but I think we've kind of hit now on the head. I ran around with it a lot, but I did. No, but it was fine. It was good. So I, I think you drew the point home pretty well. Yeah. Because there is no 100%. You know, and, and look, there are those people in a particular discipline. You know, if you're talking... David Beckham being out on the football pitch until you know midnight every night when he was a kid trying to bend a ball around a wall or hit a certain point in the goal or hit the crossbar and doing all those things. In terms of his effort and his yeah. approach and his discipline, that was 100%. He was yeah, but it, the result isn't 100%. You're not getting 100% gains every time he goes out as a free kick. No, but his, his, his approach and his, his effort there was, was 100%. Yeah, so yeah. You, but you get outliers within a very small space, but the rest of other aspects of his life were probably not 100%. Yeah. As a child, as an adult, whatever. No one is 100 in every facet of their life. No yeah, one is yeah. living the purest possible life that you could ever imagine because there will be some, just by virtue of being human, there yeah. is some fallibility somewhere in the process. Yeah, yeah. And that's okay. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Like, Don't accept worry. that. You know, part worry. of being human is to be imperfect. We're not, you know, if we were perfect, we wouldn't die. You know, you know we yeah. continue to regenerate cells at the same rate we do when we're children and we'd be yeah. young forever and, you know, we'd stop aging at 25. Yeah, the elves. Exactly. You know, we would be elves, and we're not elves. We're humans. We're people. So, um, yeah, I think that's just something you have to look at in every aspect of your life, whether it's your training, whether it's your diet, whether it's your relationships. It doesn't matter. Whether it's your work. You know, this is something I'm dealing with a lot at the moment. I have to kind of forgive myself a little bit every day for not quite achieving. Like we talked about at the beginning, it kind of brings it full circle a little bit. Yeah. The goals I set for that day. You yeah, know, not yeah. talking about the big macro goals. Just the goals, the things I want to get accomplished that day. I'm getting better at understanding what my limitations are in terms of the output I can make with work, with training, with everything else and just being okay with, you know, I'm going to accomplish one very good thing in each of those areas every day and then everything else just about falls in behind but there's no point overstretching myself because I only end up disappointed. Yeah. You know, better to set things that are achievable, realistic, manageable, I know I'm going to get them done in the time frame that I've got, 24 hours in this case, allowing for sleep and that's fine because that's just, again, part of being in. Yeah, yeah. I think I've, I've got better with my 24 hour general. I've got better with my weeks in general. I've like, I've seen a lot of like big improvements so far just in uh, just self-management rather than like my training. That's, that's easy. Like I've, I've done the front up work to like get that discipline kind of wrapped up. I know what I'm doing. I don't really have to think about it. It's all kind of passive. Stick out of there. 
chuck that in the cupboard, it's fine. Like, or just leave it in, leave my gym stuff in my bag. And like, I'm, I'm good to go. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's allowed me time to focus on other things in my life. And uh, it's, that's really helped me just like, just in myself, just be like, just more comfortable and just chill it and like, mm. trust in myself and know my values and yeah. stuff like that. Which is, that's quite nice, I think, being able to just do your own thing and yeah. be be content with like spending that time. Mm. And like, not wasting the time, because you are like spending it rather yeah. than wasting it, but just letting it, just like not, not putting pressure on myself to do like something all the time, yeah. which I, I do all the time. I, I do, so I was doing it otherwise, and that was stressing me out. I wasn't getting anything done. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's again it's something we've we probably have mentioned before. You know, plan procrastination is you actually set the intention that I know I'm going to spend, or even want to spend, or need to spend an hour of my day decompressing and unwinding. Yeah. Whether that's listening to music, whether that's watching something on TV. Whether it's just laying alone in a cold, dark room just to kind of relax and desensitize myself to everything. With the white noise and the screams. Exactly. <laughs> the Whatever it is for you, you know, everyone's different. <laughs> but just knowing that at some point in the day you're going to have to have that downtime. You know, yeah. yes, again, there are people, the Gary Vaynerchuk's as well, for example, who, unless, you know, he talks about, you know, work being his kind of oxygen, you know, just running around, having to be somewhere, doing something, be involved with some activity no matter what point of the day that he's from the moment he's awake to the moment he goes to yeah. sleep he thrives on that not everyone is going to feel like that in fact that's probably a, a real minimal amount of the population that's going to feel like that most people at some point in their day if yeah, not in fact yeah i need to sit down <laughs> well, exactly it's obviously about the food if you're not factoring in that i know i'm going to have to eat at some point within the next three to four hours if you don't plan for that you're going to get hungry and you're going to underperform somewhere yeah. on the line likewise you're going to get you know you're going to hit a point at some point in the day where you're going to need to just decompress, just sit, remove yourself from whatever it is you're doing, just have a little bit of you time, a bit of chill, calm, even if it's just sitting there with a coffee by yourself, going out for lunch and just having some food but not looking at your phone or reading a book yeah. or taking in any more information for that hour. Plan that into your day as well, allow yourself that window and then you'll find you're much more functional and then, again, when we're talking about making conscious choices, it's not just going to happen to you, you're not going to suddenly hit a wall and feel like, oh my god, I'm that good in the yeah. middle of trying to do something actually quite productive and efficient. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I do that with... Um, shit, I, think, oh, I just completely slid down again. <laughs> oh my god. I, see, we were talking about you being bad at your words today, but... I think I've got progressively better as yeah, the Yeah, you've got, got been on. slipping. I've been getting worse and worse. <laughs> well, in lieu of you actually remembering and being conscious of time, should we wrap it up there for the day? Yeah, guys, don't worry about what I was going to say. We probably already said it anyway. <laughs> More likely. <laughs> oh, cheers, man. So we can do uh, rock, paper, scissors in person. No way. We actually can do rock, paper, scissors. This is, oh my God, this is great. Right. Okay, well, let's not play wild cards. Let's just go roll. Let's just go, yeah? Yeah, okay. Yeah, rock, right. paper, scissors. After three, four, ready? Okay. One, two, one. Oh, draw. Done, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yes. Rock to paper, or yeah. paper to rock. Paper to rock after a double scissors. Yeah. Double scissor bonanza. Right, guys, so Reese is going to wrap it up. <laughs> I'm so bad at it. Like, it's becoming really right, sure, I'm, I'm here on standby. Yeah, right, you're just to interject. Just sh me if worse comes to worse, okay? Right, guys, so that's it for our in person episode. Sorry about the background noise. Hope you enjoyed the uh, little bit of salsa going on in the background. Sorry if you've had any slurpy burrito noises going in your ears, but I'll try and cut as, edit as much out as I Hopefully can. Hopefully you felt like you were here with us. Yeah, yeah. The table's green, the window's right next to us, and the tiles on the walls are white. It's quite nice in here. <laughs> the guys, window's guys. right next to us. <laughs> that really sets the theme. <laughs> yeah. oh, there's dear. an air conditioning unit above the door frame. Yeah, there's floors, <laughs> there's a ceiling. <laughs> We have floors and we're sat on a bench <coughs> indoors. It's pretty. It's a really nice place, actually. If you, uh, yeah. So, guys, if you like what you've heard, come meet us next week at the Burrito Bar. We'll sit down and have a little conversation together. Uh, on a serious note, check us out on the social medias: Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, pages, personal profiles, anything else, anywhere you can find to get in hold of us. If you got any questions, send me a request on Cora or DM me or Chris even at ChristopherThatcher.com. Christopher Thatcher is live now, is he? Possibly. <laughs> By the time this episode goes out. 
hopefully by the time this episode goes back it goes out ChristopherThatcher.com is going to be live so check out all of Chris's sexy body over there he's got plenty of nudies he's been telling me hey 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 and uh, yeah I think that's about it uh, if you're a girl add me on Snapchat <laughs> oh. Oh yeah, 28 Transformation Program. If you want to get started with calisthenics, guys, go to 28transformation, uh, morethanlifting.com slash 28transformation. And if you want to get involved in a 100 push-up challenge, well, I'm, I'm actually getting things out. If you want to get involved in the 100 push-up challenge, go to morelifting.com slash 100 challenge. Awesome. Chris, Chris, Chris. Bit of pleasure. You know, what, what, do you have anything to say on your own, Ruben? <laughs> Uh, no, I'm fine. That was cool. Yeah, just uh, yeah. Rate, review, subscribe, get in touch, reach out. Let's know what you're thinking. Um, let's know if you're enjoying any of this nonsense because yeah. we can see people listening. <laughs> and we're hoping well, that, most that of those. Guy, that guy over here, he's been listening to me this whole time. <laughs> we're hoping most of those people are people coming back and listening to more. So uh, yeah, get in touch. And we've got some exciting stuff hopefully coming a little bit later in the year in terms of workshops and sort of some in-person stuff. So keep listen out for that and uh, yeah until next week I think we'll say goodbye yeah if you've got any requests uh, requests away and we'll Re- try and respond we'll yeah. we'll, 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 like, or we'll see, see you <laughs> we'll see, see you later have a good uh, week and I'll catch you on the next one see ya bye bye bye